Sometimes you preach on things and you're actually just dealing with an issue with an individual. I take that, I take that, that, that is the lowest level of preaching. When you don't, when you don't deal with an individual, you, you use a platform to do it. So I, my disclaimer with this, I'm not preaching about this this morning because I know of anything. But when I was prepared in my heart, I really felt like the Lord wanted us to keep our hearts. Really wanted us to, the Bible says, put a garrison around your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. And so how many of you know, you might not necessarily sin, but you know, walking through the world, you can be smudged. You can, things can come on you. You can, you can get caught up. How many have been caught up in something that God was not in before? We're not talking about blatant sin. We're talking about omission. Sometimes I've allowed. I've listened to things I shouldn't listen to. So I just want to read a quick scripture this morning. We're going to go Genesis. We'll go Genesis, the ninth chapter. If you want to stand for the reading of the word this morning, that'd be awesome. It says, the sons of Noah who went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. And these three were sons of Noah. And from these, the people of all the whole earth were dispersed. Now Noah began to be a man of the soil. And he planted a vineyard and he drank wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took the garment, laid it on both of their shoulders, walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backward and they did not see their father's nakedness. And when Noah woke from his wine and he knew that the youngest son had done to him, and he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be to his brothers. And he also said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant, and may God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. And after the flood, he lived another 350 years. All the days of Noah's life were 950 years, and he died. Lord, we ask you just to add your blessing to the reading of your word this morning. Lord, we, we ask that you would get a truth inside of us that would not only help us to be free, Lord God, but also help us to set others free. And Father, we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin to look into the scripture, that, by the way, that is kind of a strange story, isn't it? How I many know? Noah had a hard, I'm not condoning getting drunk, by the way, but Noah had gone through a whole lot of stuff. He ends up getting drunk in his tent. He, he's naked, and the young man saw it. Now, we understand that nakedness is a form of sin and shame in the Bible. In, in the book of Revelation, uh, the Laodicean church, the Lord said, you think you're clothed and right, but you're actually naked and blind. And so, so we realize that there was a shame that was happening that was directly connected to the sin of his father. And, and, and one of the things about this is, when you look at the context of it, they were all sons of Noah. But the dishonor of Noah, his father, brought a curse upon his son. It was almost like sowing and reaping. That, 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 that his son was going to reap some negative ramifications because of what? Ham had done. In fact, God doesn't want any of us to be slaves. Amen? He wants every single one of us to be sons. And the curse that came upon Ham was that you're going to be a servant of servants because you uncovered and exposed a weak area of my life. Anybody ever have a weak area in your life? The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There, there's, there's not one of us right here that has, hasn't stumbled at one time or another. And the greater curse was not on Noah because he stumbled, it was how Ham handled the situation. I'm going to tell you this. We've been talking in Sunday school about uh, kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. 
And when I look at the way heaven operates, it is the exact opposite of the way that our world is operating right now. Back then, by the way, they didn't have internet. Everything is so exposed right now. In our culture, listen, dirty laundry is basically what people pay for. it. It's, it's the stock and trade. I cannot watch TV or turn on any news channel without somebody exposing somebody else. I want to share, heaven does not expose. Heaven covers. Heaven doesn't gossip. Heaven blesses. In fact, the gospel... If, if the gospel was gossip, we would have evangelized this world every generation 100,000 times over. But it's easy to fall into it. It's easy to hear maybe a slanderous word or an unsupported word or, or an innuendo about somebody else. And I want to I guard my heart because I can become a partaker of that sin if I listen to it. It can, it can smudge me. It can damage me. It can ruin my identity as a son with the Lord if I entertain words that says of no profit. How can I speak blessing over somebody? And the Bible says, go and put a curse on my brother. I had one person tell me, one lady uh, came up to me one time, and she, she began, and in fact, when we, when we moved to this town, we ran into a bunch of people that wanted to tell us about everybody in the town. A couple people came up to us and says, now you watch out for that one, and this one's that, and this one. and, and we're like, we don't want to hear that. Because that is assassination of somebody's character. Don't tell me, because love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And if you make me jaded towards them, how can I walk up to them and be that guarded and receive them into my life or expect them to receive something from me. And so uh, one lady was telling me all the dirt about uh, somebody in town here. And I said, sis, I just don't want to hear it. Just let me believe that they are powerful. Let me believe that they are valuable. Let me believe that they are redemptible and that God loves them. Just don't tell me everything bad about them. And she said, well, it's true. Just because it's factual, maybe in some areas, doesn't make it true. Gossip is demonic. I'm gonna tell you, it's dragon breath. Uh, Dave Gordon likes to make that hot stuff, and we all like to, or most of us like to eat it, or I like to eat it, so let's put it that way. But what's that potato chip people pay $35 for? The world's hottest chip is like a Carolina Reaper or something like that. And you watch these people on the internet and they put that thing in their mouth. And it's just, it's, it's stupid on purpose, I'm telling you. And so they, they, they eat that thing and then all of them about almost have, people have had to go to the hospital like heart attack stuff when they eat that. Uh, I want to, now, now this is the nicest thing, but this is kind of what I think. Because people that come up to you and gossip, let me tell you what, that, I call that dragon breath. And so what happens is, is I want to make a gossip mint. And, and when everybody starts to gossip to me, I want, to, I want that uh, Carolina Reaper. Here, wait, 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 before. Your breath kind of stinks. Would you take that mint and just... Why would you say that, Dad? Well, the Bible says in James, it says, you got your tongue misused as a fire. And it sets on course hell's agenda. And so I, I want to I guard my heart. I want to make sure that I'm hearing the right things. I want to make sure that I'm believing the right things. Because in heaven's culture, listen, I want to be a safe place for people to come to that really make a mistake and screw up. Because the first thing that we see in the garden after Adam and Eve sin is the Lord creates a sacrifice and He creates a covering for their nakedness. By the way, for each and every one of us in here, Jesus has created a sacrifice for every one of your nakedness and to be a covering for every one of our sins. I think about the woman caught in adultery and Jesus just, he didn't accuse her. Everybody knew, but he, he covered her. The high priest, Joshua, 
The enemy is sitting there accusing him. And as he gets closer to the Lord, the high priest does. All of a sudden, it shows that his garments are filthy. And you know what the Lord does? The Lord rebukes Satan. But then he says, take off his dirty garments and get him a clean outfit and put a crown upon his head. That's the same thing that the prodigal son received when he came back to his father. He, he came back and he was robed and covered. The demoniac gets the demons cast out of him. And it blew the people's mind because after being with Jesus, they found him clothed and in his right mind. Each and every one of us are a covering for people. Each and every one of us have an opportunity to be a safe place. And the gospel and gossip does not live in the same house. It just can't. I wanna, I wanna, I'm saying this this morning because I feel like with everything that's going on in this church, in our place, I realize that in fact, my pastor used to say this. We'd have a wonderful service, and he'd say, now don't go talk about somebody and let all that good stuff leak out that you got this morning. Everybody heard the story of the woman who every day would look out her window, and her neighbor would be hanging dirty laundry on the line every single day. And everybody that came to the lady's house, she would bring them over to the window and say, look, look, can you believe that woman putting out her dirty laundry? Can you believe every day she puts dirty clothes on? on the clothesline until one day a friend came over and she ran and was pointing and accusing her neighbor of putting dirty clothes on the line. And she said, her clothes are clean. Your window's dirty. <laughs> we got a filter, don't we? Here's something in Proverbs here just real quick. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense. But a man of understanding knows when to keep his mouth shut. That's what it says. A man of understanding knows how to keep silent. Whoever goes about slandering, revealing secrets. But he who is faithful in spirit keeps the thing covered. I want to be faithful in spirit. That means I want to cover people's nakedness. You know, I always wrestled with something. You ever read, sometimes you read scriptures and it just doesn't make any sense because it doesn't seem to reflect the heart of God and we're in new covenant. And so I was reading the scripture. It says, you know, if you see a brother overtaken a fault, restore them in a spirit of meekness, right? But it also goes on to talk about there is a sin unto death, right? And there is a sin not unto death. And you know what it tells you to do to a sin that is not unto death? It tells you to pray for them. Don't go talk about it. Pray for them. But then it says there's a sin not a, that, that is unto death, and I would not have you pray for that. And I thought, does anybody have a problem with that? That's crazy. So Jesus says, don't even pray for that sin. I believe in the context of everything else Jesus told us to do. If you see a brother in a sin that is unto death, you go to them. That's why it's not telling you to pray. It's telling you to go to them. Not to cast them off like God's not going to deal with them. But, but, but you, so a lot of the insecurities and inadequacies and faults and failures that we all know that we've got, we're just supposed to pray for. Because love covers. And if there is a sin that is unto death, then... Prayer is one thing, but then we can go face to face in a spirit of meekness, lest we ourselves be tempted and cover them and be a safe place for them to be restored and to be refreshed. I declare over us this morning that none of us will have dragon breath this week and that we will not let people speak perverse things about God's perfect plan and his people that he's trying to rise out of the dunghill and out of the mire. In First Peter, I love it, it says, be kindly affectionate to one another, and it tells you to, how to take care of each other, and then it says, and remember this, love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers. I want to be the type of person where somebody comes to me, they know that I'm not going to post it. I'm not going to go with a prayer need in agreement with somebody. I'm not going to give a second and third party 
advice about something that the person we're talking about did not commission me to speak on behalf of. That's tough. I'm telling you, we got a, we, we got a negative, gossiping, accusation spirit in our nation right now. And I'm going to tell you, we are not that kingdom. So let's guard our hearts. Let's guard our ears. If somebody tries to bring up something innuendos, slander, or just fault finding with somebody, let's just, let's just say this. Let's just say, I don't feel comfortable talking about that. Maybe since you see it, you should pray for them. Or just grab them by the hand and say, yeah, let's go pray for them. That don't happen. That don't happen. Many people do not gossip to me anymore, unfortunately. Say that tongue-in-cheek. Because we know that light exposes. Remember this, just because it's true does not make it right. Even if it is true. If it is true, if it is true, if, if, if something somebody did was completely wrong and you see it, I'd say this, if you see it, you're responsible to bring healing to it. If you see it and it's bothering you that much, you have the responsibility of going and ministering grace and healing to that area. And if you don't feel like you've got the grace or the ability to do it because of a lack of relationship or something, it might be one of those 99 things that, it basically 99% of the things that says, if you see a brother overtaken in a fault, you know, that's not unto death, a sin not unto death, pray. pray for, you know what, I've, I have come to the conclusion, Jesus answers prayers. And a lot of times, I don't have to do nothing. I don't have to say nothing. I don't have to fix them. And I realize talking about them is not going to do it. It's not. So, I know this is kind of a tough word for a Holy Ghost service this morning. But I just, I just really feel in my heart that we need to guard our hearts. And I pray that God just circumcises our hearts right now. That we become hypersensitive to negativity. That we become hypersensitive to accusations, innuendos, and things said about other people when they're not willing to fix it. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, right now, we thank you that you are a covering for us. We thank you, Lord, that in the same way that Hosea went and covered his wife after all she had done wrong, all of the adultery and all of the crazy stuff, Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that for each and every one of us, you've done the same thing for us. And now, Lord, I just pray that we would become a safe place for people that are struggling with real things. I pray we would always act in the spirit like sons, like, like Shem and Japheth, Lord God, that we would, we would not ever take pleasure in exposing the weaknesses and the shortcomings and the faults of other people and that we would be a safe place for people to come and be restored, Lord God. I ask it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, for all of the, if some of us have just heard gossip and negativity, Lord God, your word says, a gossiper offers you tasty morsels, but don't forget. It says in Proverbs, a gossiper offers you a tasty morsel, but don't ever forget that it goes into your belly. So Lord, if there's any of that in our belly, if there's any of that inside of us, Lord God, if, if we have taken pleasure on that story that's sensational, or critical of someone else, Lord God, we ask right now, that you would just take it and remove it from our heart this morning. And Father, we just ask right now that we would be hypersensitive to make sure that we don't speak evil of people, that we don't assume, that we don't give innuendos, that we don't share rumors, Lord God, 
and that if we do see a problem, we're either willing to pray for that person or we are willing to go to that person before we would ever go to anyone else. And so Lord, I speak grace on us this morning. I thank you for the grace that's been imparted in this day. And Lord, we thank you that right now, the prophetic words, the testimonies, the impartations, Lord God, that we've experienced today, Lord God, we thank you that from Monday up until next Sunday, it is gonna grow and grow stronger and stronger. Lord, those people that we came up to impart a miracle to, Today, Lord God, I'm going to pray that we can get them to come to church with us next Sunday, Lord. I'm going to pray that it's people that maybe never even came to church that are getting up and grabbing the mic and saying, this is what happened at my workplace. This is what happened at my house. And so, Lord, we thank you. You are a miracle-working, ever-loving God. So, Lord, we thank you for being our shelter, our covering, our blesser, our awesome daddy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.